A lot of people say that joining a sorority will kind of like bring your GPA down because you're going to be doing so many things you're not going to keep track of school. What a lot of people don't realize is that to be in a sorority, not only does the university require you to have a minimum GPA, but a lot of times the sororities chapters themselves have an even higher GPA that you have to maintain. Right. And they will do almost anything for you to make sure that you always have that GPA. So it's good to like find girls that are in your same major and even if you haven't really been friends with them, like this is a good way to just kind of like meet more girls within your chapter and just like find someone to study with. You automatically have someone to sit next right. to in class and it makes a huge difference. Right. And you can start um, like little study groups and I yeah. know at my school um, they have for sororities um, they have a separate one than the athletics, but um, all and the athletics is the same thing. Yeah, yeah. all the athletes um, I know are required to go to study hall, and we have a required amount of hours, which is, I mean, it depends on the athlete, but we usually had about 10 hours a week, mm -hmm. so two hours every night where you just went to the learning center, and there's tutors available and everything right there, and just like so many people around to just help you, and so like whether you're on a sports team or in a sorority, a lot of places have required study hours yeah so that's true so being involved actually really does keep you motivated academically and in other ways too and if you are going into college and trying to decide whether you want to pursue like a sport or something like that and if you are able to be on that team try it out your freshman year because it's going to make a huge difference i know we both we go to different schools but we both were on an athletic team yeah. and one of the biggest advantages was registration was early for us yeah. and i I'm, I'm no longer cheerleading and are you still on crew no. no okay but like that is the one thing we miss most is being able to <laughs> register before everyone else because you are basically guaranteed to get into every single class that you want right and it's amazing it how makes nice a big it. difference and for me, it was my very first year, my very first semester, and on the very first day of school, we started practice, and instantly, I had 40 new friends that yes. were guaranteed to always be there. I had a full team of girls that I could always count on, and it was, I mean, an instant friendship, which made a huge difference, and being involved and having a set schedule where you have if you're in a sorority, you have chapter meetings and you have um, functions and you have different things that you have to go to and they're at scheduled times, it really helps your time management. Mm -hmm. So you're forced to do your homework in a specific amount exactly. of time and it really it really keeps you up to date with all of your homework and just like, it makes it a lot easier. It, so try and be involved in as much as possible. Yeah, and just having a structured schedule, like it's really good to do that with the transition from high school because in high school everything is just so structured and all of a sudden in college like you don't have to be somewhere at a certain time right. so it's easy to just like let your work go and exactly. think oh I'll get it done later tonight and then it's later tonight and you don't realize how tired you are or so, you want to watch your favorite tv exactly. show or whatever or someone just called you and wants to go to dinner and exactly. of course who doesn't want to go to dinner over <laughs> doing <laughs> homework <laughs> yeah so Stay structured and just be in, be involved in clubs and sorority life and athletic. Something that you're going to realize when you go to college is that you're going to end up in a, at least one class your entire career where you maybe aren't ready for it or it's just you got really unlucky with the teacher and you're really struggling to pass it. So what would you do if you were at the point where you just didn't know if you could go on in this class? Um... First and foremost, I would, um, at the very beginning of the semester, just know the dates of you can add drop by this certain date and you can withdraw without a fail in the class by this certain date. And there's usually about three or four different dates that your registrar will publish and you need to know them before you get too involved in a class because even if you're not doing well, if you just hate a class and yeah. you want to get out of it, you need to know. So I would know the dates um, first and foremost, and then if you get if you find yourself in the position where you just really can't see in the class, or you're at the point where even if you got a hundred on the next test, you're still not going to pass. Um, first of all, go to your advisor. Your mm -hmm. advisor is 
so helpful in so many ways. They're there for you and for you to learn how to use the resources at the school. So I would say go to your advisor and just talk to them, tell them what's going on. They're not there to judge you. They're there to get you through your problems. So um, talk to them and they'll give you um, either a form or a certain amount of advice or um, maybe set you up with a tutor to help get mm -hmm. you through the rest of the class. Um, and they'll make you feel better about it, honestly. Yeah, they will. Um, because so, they've seen the problem so many times that they know what works and what doesn't. What doesn't, exactly. So if it comes down to you having to drop a class, it's not the end of the world. No. You can still graduate on time. You can still go to grad school and <laughs> exactly. all that. Everyone has at least one of those classes where it's like, I just can't go anymore. So just don't let that class affect your other classes. Exactly. Is one of the biggest things. Keep going with all of your school work and all your other classes because that's when it becomes a problem is when it affects mm -hmm. your other classes. So if it's if you're if you're stuck in a position where you just can't keep going then drop out. It's yeah. not a big deal. And if you really and if it, you're past the date where you can drop it, go to your office the teacher's office hours. Go to every single one because you will be surprised that maybe you were at a C minus, but because you went to the office hours, your teacher is going to bump your grade to a C, which in a lot of cases is what con is considered passing. Right. That huge difference of just going to the office hours, making sure your teacher knows that you're doing your work right. and that you're trying your hardest. More, more often than not, your teacher is going to respect you so much more and it's going to really see that you care about the class. Right. And you don't have to feel like you're bothering them during their office hours because their office hours are there for them to help you. Exactly. So go there and a lot of times they'll help you with your homework. They will show you how to do the problem and then have you do one yourself. So. Mm -hmm really take advantage of that even if you go for five minutes after your lunch or when you get finished for the day and your um, one of your professors has office hours stop by for 30 minutes and even if you don't need help just talk to them yeah and make sure they know who you are because if you're making an effort to put into their class then they'll make the effort to make your grade better right. and this is especially important if you go to a huge school where just going to class, your teacher is not even going to recognize your face. So by right. going to office hours, it is going to make an, a huge difference. Yeah, it definitely will. And also, if you see that the office hours are during like a time your class period is, don't just give up and be like, oh, guess I can't go to the office hours. Ever. Talk to your teacher. Tell them that you have a class. Maybe they can work something out. I know I've had teachers who are more than happy to... Either if they can't meet me at a different time, they'll give me their email address and be like, I'm more than happy to answer questions over email. Exactly. Or they'll give me their phone number. And you would be surprised how many teachers actually do give out their phone, phone numbers. numbers. Right. A lot. I Almost all, all my teachers. All mine do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so take advantage of that. If you can't go to office hours, call them. They usually give a personal line and their Self office and number. Their office, yeah. So, I mean, call them. Leave them a message. And Teachers at my school, at least, they would even meet up with students. If they couldn't meet during the day, they would come back to campus yeah. and just help them for, you know, 20, 30 minutes in the lounge of their dorm or in the cafe or just somewhere around campus. It always, they can always work something out. So, Devin, thank you so much for talking to us about staying motivated and time management. And hopefully our viewers will be a little more excited to go back to school. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Yeah. So, I'm sure you guys will see Devin again at some point, and thanks again. No problem. Bye. Bye.